So I'm here with Jackie. Jackie, I met you over a year ago, May 1st of uh, 2022. Uh, what's new, what's changed in a year? Well, I, a lot. I'm still out on the street, so that hasn't changed. I didn't used to smoke blues. I started, sadly, it was actually, you said it was May 1st that you interviewed me. And it was probably the end of May that I started, so probably about three weeks after our interview. Is that because of your, you're out here, you yeah. see it, you're around it? Yeah. Big influence around here? Yeah. I just, and I, I guess I just reached a new level of just being sad. I just, I just stopped caring. There was a certain level that I had stuck to of being, I, I guess, like hope that I held on to for a long time, which is why I didn't touch them, you know? And I, I wanted to keep myself away from that, at least, you know? And um, I don't know, something inside of me kind of just snapped at some point. Can't really tell you what it was, but. You said before you had hope, so you're saying now you have no hope? Very little of it. Yeah. It comes and goes, most days, no though. Is it like a depression? She just pulls you down? Yeah. yeah. And the blues don't help with that. They kind of keep you in a fog, so. It numbs the pain? Yeah. It doesn't make you happier, but it numbs things. It doesn't hurt as much? Yeah. There's also like professional counseling for that that could help you with that so you don't have to be dependent to, yeah. out, you know, to these blues. Have you ever tried that? Um, I was in counseling from a young age. I think I started counseling when I was like 12 for like six years. Did that help at all? Well, I wasn't doing blues that at that point, so right. maybe it did. <laughs> but, um, I don't know. I stopped going. I moved out when I was young. So I moved out when I was like 16. I still kept going to see a therapist for like another couple of years after that. But, um, eventually just stopped. But, uh, I don't know. I've thought about it. I feel like if I got off the streets, that would probably be something that I would I would do. I feel like it'd be in, like integral to my well-being. But Absolutely. Um, if you were to be off the streets today, what would you be doing? Going to school, working, family? Working, probably. Um, I miss working, honestly. I thought about going back to school. I did do a little bit of schooling before I quit. Family, maybe. I have a daughter that I haven't had since she was born, so. How old is your daughter? She's a year and a half. So you, she was about six months when I met you? You miss her? Where's she at? She's my family. It seems, Jackie, like you've lost a lot in this time that you've been out here in the streets. Yeah. Aren't you scared of losing more? You know, I, when, when everything else is gone, your life becomes kind of meaningless. Trivial? Yeah. What's the point? Yeah. Well, the point is that you have a baby out there that misses you. It's wondering, where's my mom at? You miss her. You love her. I was just talking to somebody earlier, and uh, we were talking about generational curse. Yeah. If my grandmother was out here... My father was out here. Yeah. I'm probably going to be out here. Yeah. But the bad thing is that I have children, so will my children be out here? You don't want your daughter out here. That's true. The whole break the cycle thing. Is it possible to break the cycle? Well, I know people have done it. So it is possible? Yeah. Are you, do you think you're strong enough to break it? Sometimes I think so. Sometimes I don't. Uh, where to from here? Because this is like a year update. Next year when I see you, where will you be? What will you be doing? Hopefully not here. <laughs> Definitely hopefully not here. I don't know. That year went by really fast. So. Which one do you want? Depends on the day you ask me. Today, hopefully clean. 
tomorrow. Well, what'd your daughter want? <laughs> Probably clean. <laughs> in that year, being out here in the streets, how are you staying safe from all the people that want to do you harm and keep it to myself. I don't really kick it with too many people. I find that most people aren't my vibe anyway. Most people fake the funk. I'm not into that, so you know. The more involved you get, the more in danger. Sometimes the more friends you have, it isn't always safer. I've discovered that friends out here on the streets, they're not really your friends. Sometimes yeah. those are the ones that harm you the most. Friends, quote unquote, right? Yeah. I'd say that. <laughs> so, what about family? Your family, have they reached out to you? Have you reached out to them? Nobody's trying to rescue you? I don't you? have much family to speak of. So. But what about the people that are, the family that's watching your baby? You trust them with your baby. It wasn't my choice. When do you think you'll see your daughter again? I can't remember exactly what we talked about a year ago, but I um, can't remember exactly what we talked about a year ago, but I don't know if you sounded more hopeful, right? More. Yeah, I think I did. If I remember myself a year ago, that would be my guess. <laughs> Have you hit rock bottom yet? I always think I do, and then little um, kind of whips out a drill and goes a little bit lower, so, you know. <laughs> yeah. how, many, uh, how many pills do you do per day? Depends on the day. Depends on how much money I have. <laughs> What's the most you've ever done? Probably about 50. Woke up. Went to go get high. Do you, um, why do you think you OD'd that time but not other times? Is it because you had a lot of p uh, pills on the tray, on the yeah. aluminum foil? How many did you have? Of, I don't remember exactly. A lot. And I was smoking back to back. I wasn't trying to die necessarily. I don't think. Maybe I was. I'm not really sure. Everything's kind of blurry then. But I knew that I was trying to not feel anything. I had the money to blow, so. What, uh, were you trying to numb a pain physical, emotional, mental? Emotional, mental. It's like bad memories that you have from your childhood? Yeah, and realizing that when you look back and you realize that there's not really anybody to blame but yourself, you know? There's a reason why people blame other people when things go wrong. It's because anger is an easier feeling to deal with than pain. It's more tolerable. It helps you displace some of the weight off of your own shoulders. That's why people do it. That's why when things go wrong, they instantly look for somebody to point the, the finger at. So it's when you look at everything in your life, you can't blame anybody. The only person you can look at is yourself. You know, like when everything is messed up and it's nobody's fault but your own. Jackie, there are lots and lots of 12, 13, 14 year old Jackies at home right now fighting emotional issues, physical issues, abuse of all sorts. What what can you tell them to not end up out here? What they what should they do to seek help now so that they don't end up out here medicating themselves, numbing that pain that they're experiencing today? I wish I had advice, but if I knew what to do, I wouldn't have been out here. So, uh, Jackie, what I do know is that I hope that you get better. I pray that you get better. Um, you're obviously dealing with the depression, anxiety, uh, having awful thoughts. Please, please help yourself, okay? Please seek help. You're not alone. You matter. You're important in this world. Um, here we are talking a year later, almost to the day. You know, I'm just reminding you that you're special and, and, and your baby is needs you, okay? So uh, please stay safe. God bless you, and we'll talk soon, okay?